Over the next couple of days, I'll be exploring the Forest of Dean and the Brecon Beacons with the brand new Olympus OMD EM1X. Now, we're so lucky to have two of these bodies. So I've got one for shooting stills and Jamie will be shooting the video with the other body. So everything you see in this test will be with one of these. Now we've started our trip here at Simmons Yacht, Yacht Rock, where we've got these incredible views. And I'm hoping with a little bit of luck, we'll also get some wildlife and some beautiful weather to see just what these bodies can do. We've got some much nicer colour this side of the rock, so this is going to be a more worthwhile landscape to take. I've got the 124028 Pro on, uh, so we'll have a look, see how this is, and then I've noticed there are some little birds flitting about over there, so then I'm going to stick the 300mm on and see what we can get with that. Right, this uh, river down here warrants a landscape in portrait, which it's the first time I've done this on this camera. So obviously, design-wise, it's got an integrated grip. So you can see that here, it's sort of that square design, gives you a lot more to hold onto on the bottom. So we've got the controls you would expect as well, shutter, the same dials as you have when using it this way up. You've also got the autofocus joystick for moving your points around, things like that. And it can hold two batteries as well. So battery life on this, it means you don't have to be constantly changing, you've got them in there. So, take a portrait now. Portrait landscape. So, there's a man over there who's got a big scope. He's clearly looking at something. So I'm gonna steer. It turned out my new best friend had eyes on a peregrine. Unfortunately, it was a little too far away for my 300 mil though. We're gonna head back now. Sun's going down, it's starting to rain. And even though this is weatherproof, we're not. So regroup in the morning. This morning, we've made our way over to the Brecon Beacons and I'm really pleased we did. Cause when we got up this morning, the Forest of Dean was super, super dull. There was nothing going on with lighting. But as you can see behind me, as soon as we got over those hills, things became a little bit more interesting. The sky's a little bit more dynamic. So that's good for one thing. I've got the 12 to 40 on, I can get a couple of landscapes. But also secondly, we're heading over to a red kite feeding center so I can test out the burst rate and the autofocus on this thing. And it'll just make the background of those images a little bit more interesting than just a solid white gray background. So I'm hoping this sort of sky will stick around for a little bit, get some images here, and then we'll head for the red kites. I'm going to shoot a few different compositions here just to see what works, whether I can pull back harsh shadows, how much I'm losing. It was nearly feeding time for the red kite, so we headed off. Although Jamie was clearly hoping for something a little more comical to happen as we made our way back to the car. I don't slip in every video. So we've just got to the feeding centre. Um, the kites are being whipped into a bit of a frenzy in nearby fields. They know by now, the people here have been doing this for absolutely years. All the kites are wild, but we've just arrived. And at the moment, we're the only people here, so I can pick all the best spots to get the images. Um, so we're gonna set up, get the 300 mil on. I've got the 50 to 140 ready as well, because they do come quite close here. Um, I've only been once before to review a different camera and it was just fantastic. So I couldn't wait to come back to review something like this with such good autofocus focus on the high frame rate. Can't wait to see what we'll get. They're getting everything ready now. They're gonna put some food down and then in they'll come. So the poor chicken is everywhere now over this field and the red kites are really moving in. Um, so I've got the 300 mil on. I've just set this to continuous autofocus with tracking lock on because I wanna see how that does in this environment basically. But it is a total frenzy. The 300 mil is very close. I mean, they are literally right here. So we'll have to see how it does tracking and locking on. I mean, these are all the same animal. They look exactly the same to this camera. They're the same shape and they're moving around. You 
so high frame rate on this. Um, you've got a low version, which I think is about 10 frames per second, and you've got high, which is 15 frames per second. But you can also do high silent, which is 60 frames per second, uh, if you've got a fast enough card and things like that. So you should be able to get some more sort of story-like shots. Trees in the background are confusing the lock-on somewhat, but it's doing pretty well. Also, I know this is super camera nerdy, and it shouldn't matter at all, but it sounds really nice. Shouldn't matter, but it does. It does a bit. So we've come out to this bit of the hide. It's really open air here, so we've got to keep it down a little bit, um, which is really easy for me, so I don't talk much and um, we can really see the birds nice and clearly. Now, what I've done is, because there is, are a lot of trees in the background, you know, the kites are making really odd shapes, there's a lot going on. So I'm gonna try a feature with this camera. So basically, you can set how you want the autofocus to lock on. So you can set your own shape. Now, there are some predestined shapes in this, um, specifically for motorsport planes, trains um, which are really cool unfortunately this time of year i'm not sure how much of a chance i'm going to get to test that out but i can create my own shape so what i'm going to do is i'm going to create a shape which is a line so that when they're coming at me and their wings are wide open it should be the perfect shape for the camera to lock on at, and it should make it a little bit easier for the camera to lock on when you've got messy trees and hills and things in the background That horizontal line is just locking on a lot quicker now so that obviously works so that's a worthwhile feature in this camera there is a lot going on in the em1x you just have so many different features and it's taken me i'm still not up to grips with it it took me so long off camera to find that setting when i was trying to set it up but once you've sort of got it i think actually all the settings can be really really useful you just have to figure out what you need when you need it and also you can make your own menu I think we've finished testing the EM1X on the kites now. They've all headed off and I think we're going to too. High frame rate in Silent was nice to use as well. These kites don't really care, they're quite loud, but some places you go to with wildlife and you just can't be making any noise at all. The sound of a shutter will disturb everything. So it's nice to know you've got that silent mode there as backup if anything came a little bit closer or any little birds came down that are a little bit more flitty. But we're losing the light now, so we're going to go back across the beacons, back to the Forest of Dean where we're staying. Hopefully there'll be some nice light on the way back. We'll be able to get a few more landscapes. You never know. This is Canop Ponds, where we've got a couple of nice bits of water, we've got some streams going down, and we have some birds. So this should be a good test for the live ND. Hopefully there's a little waterfall just down there, that's my plan. And we've got some swans and some ducks to again, try that high frame rate and the autofocus on. Well, I'm gonna leave the swans in peace now, especially after the uh, <laughs> crazed attack by that little spaniel on them. So. Uh, Hopefully they'll go and have a nice time to chill out whilst we go and take some pictures of the waterfall. So we're down at the waterfall now. You can see it just behind me. It's not anything crazy, but it's enough to show off the live ND. So I'm setting up on the tripod and then we'll do a few different exposures to see how well the digital live ND works. At the moment, I've started off with ND2. We've got a 1.3 shutter speed, we're on F14 and I've put the ISO down to the lowest, I think native, which is 200. I'm gonna get a shot here, and then I'm gonna just work my way up and try and get it as slow as I can. So right up to ND32, so we'll do that now. So we've just finished taking pictures of the waterfall, and now there's a nice log here which is covered in moss and fungus and stuff like that. So it's got loads of detail. So I'm gonna try the high res mode here. I'm gonna do the handheld one first. Now handheld, you get a 50 megapixel raw, and then I'm gonna stick it on the tripod where that should produce an 80 megapixel raw. Now in the handheld version, I can, I can go down to a shutter speed of 60, um, and that should still allow me to get a handheld high res shot. So we'll try that first. So first of all, I'm gonna take this shot without high res mode on so we have a comparative example. So I'm gonna have my ISO on 250. I've got a uh, 80th of a second shutter speed and I'm on F4. So I'm gonna do that and I'm gonna keep the autofocus point in the same place. So we'll take one of those. I've just realized burst is still on. What a pro, huh? What a pro. 
So let's turn that off. So what I'm doing is just making sure this little dibble of wood that's sticking up is just touching the top of my frame just so I'm in the same place each time. So I'm going to take that shot and then in the menu system, I've already saved the high res shot to my personal menu. So I can go high res shot and we can go shooting method handheld. Okay, now we're going to do that. So we'll take this shot. We're going to focus in the same place. Okay, so now it's working. So I put it on an 80th just to give it a fighting chance of working. Basically, it does say it can work down to a 60th, but let's see what it does at an 80th. I'm just going to have a quick peek at these. So the first one that's not high res, pretty sharp. Second one. Oh yeah, there's a lot more detail immediately. I can see that straight on the screen. So we've got it set up on the tripod. Now we're going to do the high res shots. Now on high res for tripod, I'm going to set a delay time of one second. So it's just as still as it can be. Handheld, we'll change it to tripod. Now I'm going to set this up, put the autofocus point in the right place. I'll step away. It's creating that shot now. So it's very quick actually, it's a very quick version. So this is without the high res shot, I'll show you now. And this is with, again, noticeable difference compared to without the high res shot. So that's an 80 megapixel raw i think i'm not sure off the top of my head saying it right now but i think they create slightly lesser jpeg so i think you get a 50 megapixel jpeg and a 50 mega in in the handheld mode and a 50 megapixel jpeg in the tripod mode it may not look that different to you um as at the moment we don't have the raw codec so hopefully uh, you'll see a bit of a difference there so we've got another test just here for the 120 frames per second slow motion i'm such a sucker for slow motion so um, we're going to do that again here we've got a little bit this morning we've got a little bit of water trickling through here so i'm going to take uh, one set of video at 4k 30p and then one at the 120 just so you can see the difference so we've got full hd in 120 frames per second so let's do that now there we go so something that's really nice about this when you are recording in hd it shows the record time going up for how long the, that's going to be so if i take five seconds obviously it's like four times slow motion it'll show it at 20 seconds so at the moment now that is bang on one minute of video that i just took there when actually to you is just a few seconds so you can you can see how much it's going to be i think that's quite a nice feature um, and now i'll do it in 4k 30 so it's really easy to get to there's a video menu and you just go mode set it at, no i'm wrong oh <laughs> <laughs> haven't learned it that well have i so specification settings and it's the first one so you can put it straight into 4k this camera also does cinema 4k at 24p as well i've been using just standard 4k at 30p so we're going to use that we'll set that okay and we'll do a bit of video in that now So we've just come back to Ross on Wye and we are here at St Mary's Church. It's an absolutely stunning building. Okay, so as you can see, we've got some dodgy lines going on here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a picture like this just to illustrate that. So got some dodgy lines going in. Everything looks like it's falling backwards, which is what you get with a lot of architectural photography. Now, personally, I go into Adobe. I quite often just press autocorrect, which I know is bad, but I do that. Um, and I think a lot of people do when they just want it to sort of look right straight away. What you should really do is use a tilt and shift lens so you can correct things properly and you don't get that weird line perspective happening. What this has is a tilt and shift basically in camera. So keystone compensation, you just go into the menu, it's on the shooting menu, keystone compensa compensation, you just turn it on, off of the menu and we're on our main screen. So, oh, I've just turned it off, that's good, isn't it? Okay, so now we've got it here. So I focus on the building and it's all you do then is you use your dials to move it. So here I'm using my front dial to do the vertical, to bring it forward. And then I can use the other dial to bring the sides in. So you can make your picture look really weird here. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna correct the upright, stretching it a little bit. So I'm not gonna over correct it. I'm just gonna move that back slightly. And we'll take that picture and you can see what, what happens with it there. So there's loads of stuff you can do with it basically. It's a cool little feature to have. I don't think people will use it professionally a lot of the time, 
But if you've got a nice building and you're on holiday and you want to take a nice picture of it, this is a good little thing just to get that tiny bit of correction in. So we've run up this hill from where we're staying, just down there in that farmhouse. Um, and actually, you can't see a thing up here. Um, so I'm just going to run down through that gate and try and get the sunset. There's a little bit of colour, so we'll see what we can get. It's a bit of a nasty hedge, this. If I can get closer, make use of this articulating screen. Yes, there we go. It's nice to have had a bit of colour come out of what has been a cloudy three days, really. Um, tomorrow morning, we're going to try and find a sunrise. There might be something, we might head up to Simmon Jack, it's a really nice high area for here. And it looks like I've used suncalc.org to find out where the sun's rising and what angle. It looks like there might be something there. So we're going to try that out. But for now, I've got to copy all this off. To conclude our trip, we're back at Simmons Yap where we started and we're here for sunrise. It's about 25 minutes until the sun actually rises. As you can see, we do have a bit of blue sky going on. There's a bit of light there and hopefully we'll get some nice colouring coming through. But I've also bought the other lenses because already we've got little birds flitting about everywhere. So hopefully I can get some nice images before I have to give this back. We've just got back from the Forest of Dean and I'm just about to run to Olympus and drop the bodies back. The EM1X has been super nice to use over the last couple of days. I've really enjoyed like, the features it has inbuilt. The live ND specifically was really nice. High res mode seemed to work really well. And also just the tracking worked so nicely, especially in low light. It's a real shame we didn't get the weather that I've actually got here now and back uh, whilst we were there. So I'd like to try these a little bit more later in the year, especially with things like motorsport, because I just didn't get a chance to try the tracking out. And I know it's got some really cool modes for that, but it performs so well with the wildlife. I can't see why it wouldn't do with the motorsport and planes and trains either. So if you need any more information on the body, of course, we've got loads of stuff on the website. You can go on there, give us a call, send us an email or put a comment below and we'll try our best to get back to you with all the information that you need. Thanks for watching. Might just have to move slightly. <laughs> oh, I said this trip, I wouldn't trip. <laughs>